Step into the clandestine world of The Sopranos, where loyalty is paramount, but betrayal lurks in the shadows. Meet the rats, the informants whose actions shook the very foundation of trust. But which betrayal inflicted the deepest wound? This tier list reflects the perceived impact each character's betrayal had on the Soprano crime family and its operations throughout the series. Stick around, as we'll unveil not just the overt rats, but also unveil potential FBI informants within the Soprano family. Brace yourself to uncover the most dangerous rat of them all. The first informant to emerge within the ranks of Tony Soprano's crew is Jimmy Altieri. Initially portrayed as a trusted capo running his own outfit, Altieri's true colors gradually surface. Though scant details are provided about his background, it becomes evident that he's been in cahoots with Tony for quite some time. A pivotal moment arrives during Larry's daughter's wedding in season one, when Altieri cryptically warns of impending indictments. Oh, it ain't just my source in Jersey. Half of New York moved to Fort Lauderdale already. As Tony and Larry conspire to stash evidence at Greengrove, Altieri intersects their plans, seeking admission for his own mother. However, doubts linger over whether Greengrove will accept her without scrutinizing Altieri's finances. They want to see my financial statement again. The tension escalates during a card game busted by the FBI, leading to Pussy's attempted escape and the apprehension of Tony's men. Amidst the chaos, a corrupt detective discloses the unsettling truth. Someone inside of the Soprano family is feeding information to the FBI, raising suspicions about Jimmy's role in the card game's exposure. The revelation reaches its climax when Altieri brazenly visits Tony's mansion. I don't believe it. How'd you get out? Hey. Mm. Come, look who's here, Jimmy. Their clandestine conversation in the basement serves as a tipping point, with Jimmy's thinly veiled inquiries about Colombian drug money. They were asking me a lot of questions in there. If I knew anything about the dead Colombian and the apartment and all that, with Uncle Junior's approval, Tony orders Jimmy's execution, culminating in the grim discovery of his lifeless body, a symbolic rat wedged in his mouth. A stark reminder of his duplicitous dealings with the FBI. F ass piece of shit. Within the intricate power dynamics of The Sopranos, the FBI's pursuit of informants usually targeted those closest to Tony Soprano. However, a significant shift occurred when they focused on Jack Masserone, a construction magnet. In the infamous Rat Pack episode, suspicions arose about Masserone's secret dealings with the FBI. It's unclear when his collaboration began, but hints suggest it might have started after Tony's warning in season two's Do Not Resuscitate episode. Masserone's failure to heed this advice led to his downfall. Tony's confrontation with Masserone at a diner exposed the latter's nervousness. Masserone's slip-up about Tony's weight loss sealed his fate, marking him as a liability. Have you lost a little weight? You think? Huh? Oh. Like Jimmy Altieri, Masserone met a grim end with a sock stuffed in his mouth, sending a chilling message about betrayal's consequences. Questions linger about whether a wire was hidden in the painting featured in Rat Pack. While it's not confirmed, the circumstances surrounding the artwork's presentation to Tony hint at FBI involvement. Oh, look at that. The episode showcases advancements in surveillance technology, suggesting the possibility of concealing devices. Cryptic shots of the painting intensify speculation about its role as a surveillance tool. Yet why would the FBI assume the painting would occupy a space conducive to mafia discussions? Additionally, embedding a wire within a delicate object like a painting carries risks. A fall resulting in the wire's exposure could jeopardize the entire operation. Said I looked like I lost some weight. Amidst the aftermath of Adriana's tragic demise, The Sopranos delves deeper into the theme of betrayal, spotlighting a couple of three additional informants. How much more betrayal can I take? Ray Curdo, a trusted member of Tony's inner circle, emerges as one of them. His betrayal unfolds during season three, as he casually suggests wearing a wire at Livia Soprano's wake. Tony Soprano's mother's wake is tonight. The reasons behind his decision remain ambiguous, but are hinted at throughout the series. His son's battle with multiple sclerosis and the financial strain of treatment likely fueled his desperation. Moreover, his prior encounter with law enforcement at a brothel alongside Peter McAllister hints at his susceptibility to coercion. Come on, take it easy. Penny, stop it. Come on, let's get this show on a roll. Look at this. Ray's fate takes a tragic turn when he suffers a stroke in an FBI agent's car. 
Despite his clandestine cooperation, he manages to evade suspicion from his fellow Soprano family members. Despite his respected status within the family, Ray's collaboration with law enforcement remains discreet. His reluctance to assume a leadership role after Jackie Sr.'s death hints at deeper motives. Ray's finesse in handling FBI meetings suggests a self-initiated approach to securing his future. How should I know? He's a dope addict. Did I already give you that? Unlike his counterparts, he exudes confidence and control, indicating a symbiotic relationship with his handlers. Providing crucial intel, such as recordings of capo meetings and discussions about criminal activities, further solidifies this theory. Ray's motivations primarily stem from familial responsibilities, particularly his son's medical needs. His decision to cooperate with authorities is a strategic move to maintain his freedom and provide for his loved ones. By staying under the radar and avoiding involvement in major crimes, Ray ensures his continued presence on the streets while safeguarding his family's well-being. The extent of his betrayal remains a mystery. He adeptly evades suspicion from his fellow Soprano family members. Despite his clandestine cooperation, Ray ultimately meets a fitting end. Stand up guys like that. They're a dying breed. Amen to that. In the latter part of the series, another rat emerged, none other than Eugene Ponacorvo. Oh! This revelation struck a chord with devoted Sopranos fans, particularly as Eugene's cooperation with the FBI was revealed in a single encounter during the episode Members Only. His motive? A desperate bid to extricate himself and his family from the clutches of the mafia life. We're ignoring the negatives. It's fucking brutal with the bugs with dreams of a fresh start in sunny Florida. The exact moment when Eugene assumed the role of an informant remains shrouded in ambiguity, adding a layer of mystique to his character arc. His transition into an informant seemed abrupt and unforeseen, devoid of any foreshadowing within the narrative of the show. The Sopranos never intended to portray him as a betrayer, leaving fans puzzled by the sudden twist that injected tension into the storyline. Hey! Oh! After all, these mobsters navigate a minefield of potential slip-ups daily. One misstep, and Eugene found himself in a similar predicament to Adriana. Much like Raymond, the extent of Eugene's cooperation and the incriminating evidence he provided remain shrouded in mystery. Tony's refusal to greenlight Eugene's relocation plans to Florida put the brakes on his FBI deal. Tony asked me to speak to you. That's a no-go. What? The Bureau's focus? taking down Tony Soprano right in his New Jersey backyard. We've talked about Florida, okay? Gene, that's not gonna happen. Faced with a dire dilemma, Eugene saw no way out but to end his life, fulfilling his family's aspirations for a fresh start. Once again, Tony and his dwindling crew dodged a bullet, albeit at the cost of another trader's demise. We lost a major asset this month. Point is, was Ray Curto a cooperator? However, there persists a compelling theory among dedicated followers of The Sopranos. The notion that it was Eugene's wife who orchestrated the hit on Tony Soprano in the show's final episode. While I remain skeptical of this interpretation, it's a captivating notion worth exploring. If you subscribe to this theory, feel free to share your perspective in the comments below. Maybe it was a homo. Felt there was no one he could talk to about it. That happens too. Amidst the haze of suspicion surrounding Jimmy and Salvatore's allegiances, the unsettling truth emerged. Salvatore, too, had aligned with the FBI. What the f you doing? F moron. In a vivid flashback, Tony recollects Salvatore's H dealings, despite warnings from Tony and Jackie Sr. about its dangers. Despite Aprile's offer of financial assistance, Salvatore declined, most likely wary of indebtedness to the boss. The pivotal moment arrived when Salvatore faced FBI apprehension. I'm telling you guys, I want my f lawyer. You call your lawyer, Sal, it's over. No deals. I don't want any f deal. Faced with the specter of a lengthy prison sentence, Salvatore confronted a grim choice. Betray Tony Soprano and this thing of ours, or endure the bleak confines of incarceration. Choosing the path of informant, Salvatore was assigned Agent Skip Lapari as his liaison. In 1995, his inebriated Santa Claus guys at a Christmas party signaled a deeper betrayal, his discomfort palpable as Tony sensed his treachery, at least subconsciously. Salvatore's informant status offered the FBI a strategic advantage. His proximity to Tony facilitated gathering damning evidence, his involvement in various illicit activities proving invaluable. Returning from an ostensible Puerto Rican sojourn, Salvatore faced accusations from a corrupt detective. He's wired for sound. What? I got it from a good source. I thought you should know. 
Tony's loyalty test through Polly Gualtieri revealed Salvatore's refusal to be searched, intensifying suspicions. Yet, lacking wire evidence, Tony forbade retribution, Salvatore's subsequent disappearance fueling conjecture. Reluctant disclosures during meetings with Agent Lapari underscored Salvatore's lingering loyalty to Tony. However, his resentment burgeoned when bypassed for promotion, culminating in his irrevocable turn against Tony and cohorts. Salvatore had even suggested that he could work in law enforcement once he was finished helping the FBI build their case. 5.16 a.m. Subjects departing searchlight diner. He started recording notes and tailing members of his crew, but things quickly went wrong. In an unrequested stakeout, he was involved in a car accident, which only added to his troubles. Tony's disillusionment with Salvatore crystallized, his dream portending betrayal. A clandestine search unearthed wire evidence, confirming Salvatore's perfidy. Confronted on a boat, Salvatore confessed to espionage, claiming dual allegiance to Tony. Unmoved, Tony consigned Salvatore to a watery grave, his betrayal irredeemable. They push. Do you even really exist? <laughs> In the intricate web of relationships within the Soprano crime family, the dynamics between Christopher Moltisanti and Adriana stood out prominently. Christopher's ascent in the family hierarchy played a pivotal role in Adriana's unfortunate fate. Her involvement in cocaine distribution at the club she managed made her a target. Despite relentless pressure from the FBI, Adriana remained steadfastly loyal to Christopher, refusing to provide any incriminating information. Adriana LaServa? Special Agent Dwight Harris. F However, this loyalty was a double-edged sword, revealing deeper layers of allegiance within the family. Christopher's unwavering loyalty to Tony Soprano became evident when he clandestinely informed Tony about Adriana's cooperation with the government. The true extent of Christopher's loyalty unfolded in a shocking flashback during the sixth season. In a staged scenario involving drugs, alcohol, and a fake suicide attempt, Christopher manipulated Adriana into a vulnerable position, leading to her tragic demise at the hands of Silvio. F*** you. I do enough for you people. You're not bugging my club. Fabian Petrullio, also known as Fred Peters, was once a soldier in the DeMeo crime family. He later turned informant, leading to convictions of several mobsters, including Jackie April and a close friend named Jimmy. After being expelled from the witness protection program, Likely due to involvement in drug dealing, he settled in Waterville, Maine, posing as a travel agent. Tony Soprano, by chance, encounters Peters at a gas station while touring colleges with his daughter, Meadow. Recognizing him, Tony decides to avenge the DeMio family's betrayal. He conducts surveillance, discovering Peters' alias and ultimately locating his travel agency. Hello, Red. After failed attempts to eliminate Peters at his home in a motel, Tony takes matters into his own hands. He ambushes Peters outside the travel agency, strangling him with wiring and leaving his body as a warning to others. In the pivotal moment of The Sopranos, Carlo Gervasi, prompted by his cousin Bert's betrayal and subsequent demise, took the startling step of becoming an informant. What if he flipped? Who? Carlo? Well... This unexpected turn of events was likely motivated by his desire to shield his son, who had been apprehended by the FBI for involvement in drug-related activities. Carlo's absence during a crucial meeting with Polly Gualtieri raised suspicions within the Soprano family. Ultimately, Tony Soprano was informed by his lawyer that Carlo had indeed started cooperating with law enforcement. What? And if Carlo starts talking homicide, fuck it. Highlighting the extreme measures individuals are willing to take to protect their loved ones in the perilous realm of organized crime. Jimmy Patrille, Johnny Sack's trusted conciliere, maintained a facade of loyalty while harboring a sinister secret. Unbeknownst to his associates, Jimmy had been covertly collaborating with the FBI for an extensive duration, stretching back to the early 80s. This revelation sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, unveiling Jimmy's treachery and the depth of his betrayal. Neil Mink, a credible informant within the mob, divulged that Jimmy had been providing invaluable intelligence to the authorities for a staggering 18-year period. The revelation begs the question, did Jimmy's deceit persist throughout the entirety of those 18 years, or did it extend even further back in time? Anyway, Jimmy's testimony serves as damning evidence against Johnny Sack, sealing his fate behind bars. 
Surprisingly, Tony Soprano emerges unscathed from the ordeal, despite the looming threat of legal repercussions. As the acclaimed series approaches its conclusion, avid fans are tantalized by the emergence of additional characters speculated to be entangled with the FBI. Among the most persistent rumors is the suspicion surrounding Christopher Moltisanti's allegiance. While concrete evidence of Christopher's cooperation with authorities remains elusive, subtle hints suggest the possibility of his betrayal. The FBI's relentless pursuit of Tony Soprano leads them to view Chris as a potential link. This scrutiny intensifies when Chris's girlfriend starts cooperating with the authorities, casting suspicion on him. Chris's revelation of Adriana's dealings further ignites Tony's fears, prompting him to question if Chris is wearing a wire. Despite sacrificing his relationship with Adriana to prove his loyalty to Tony, Christopher finds himself subjected to ridicule and scorn from his fellow mobsters. Meanwhile, figures like Tony Blundetto and Bobby Bacala gain favor with Tony, exacerbating Christopher's struggles with addiction and inner demons. Christopher's sacrifices for the family are met with derision and disrespect from his peers, with Polly even jesting about Christopher's daughter's potential future as a dancer at the Bada Bing. <laughs> You never heard of pulling out? Amidst this turmoil, Christopher undergoes a significant personal transformation, embracing roles as a husband and father and grappling with the newfound need to protect his family. Like I always say, man is not complete till he's married. Then he's finished. <laughs> the mystery surrounding the death of Hollywood screenwriter Dolan only deepens as his demise appears to be linked to organized crime. Christopher's presence at Dolan's apartment, evidenced by his fingerprints, raises suspicions yet this detail is conveniently overlooked. The hushed nature of Dolan's murder suggests the involvement of clandestine forces, possibly manipulated by the FBI. Could Dolan's death have been intentionally downplayed to use as leverage against Christopher? Was it a strategic move by authorities to pressure him, a valuable target? Reflecting on JT's fate in The Sopranos, one wonders how Tony would react to such a situation. JT's untimely demise could have brought unwanted attention and trouble to the Soprano family, yet Tony remains strangely silent, prompting speculation about his awareness of the event. Chris, you're in the mafia. Furthermore, Multisanti jests about Sammy the Bull. Gravano's opulent lifestyle facilitated by the Witness Protection Program, attributing it to the government's seemingly endless resources. Examining Gravano, as Christopher mentions before his confrontation with J.T. Dolan, amplifies the significance. Gravano, essentially a serial killer with around 19 confirmed murders, received a reduced sentence by cooperating with the FBI against Gotti. In Walk Like a Man, Christopher drunkenly confides in J.T. Dolan about his influence within the mafia and ponders betrayal. Skip's actions in safeguarding informants like Salvatore underscore the FBI's prioritization of assets over adherence to the law despite awareness of criminal behavior. It's evident that Skip Lapari was aware of Sal's involvement in Matthew's massacre, but opted to overlook it, likely aiming to target Tony Soprano. Therefore, the FBI chooses not to pursue Christopher criminally, seeking his collaboration to reach Tony. During the crucial meeting with Tony and Phil, Christopher's demeanor appears oddly detached. His reaction to Tony's scheme suggests a deeper awareness, hinting at a realization that their conversation might be monitored by authorities. Christopher's comment about disclosed monitoring at every landfill seems to confirm suspicions. You know there's close monitoring at every f***ing landfill. Raising doubts about his loyalties and motives. This explains his uncharacteristic willingness to meet Phil's terms to avoid conflict. While some fans speculate that Christopher's docile behavior stems from being high on heroin, it's revealed that he actually had cocaine in his system, a substance known to induce aggression. Despite his disdain for Phil, Christopher would rather confront him than comply, reflecting their tumultuous relationship. Frankly, Tom, I'm thinking maybe we should meet Phil's number. His habit of blasting music at ear-splitting levels while driving could signify wavering loyalty to Tony or feeling coerced into informant duties by the FBI, employing tactics akin to Sal's misinformation campaigns to safeguard Tony from wiretaps. This system's got no balls. Notably, the soundtrack they favor is from The Departed, a film rich with themes of betrayal and informants. Consider the peculiar incident when Tony discusses Phil and their illicit dealings, and Christopher promptly increases the radio volume in apparent frustration, possibly to obscure wire transmissions. His fixation on eluding drug tests seems odd, given his involvement in illegal activities. 
However, if sobriety is a condition of his agreement with authorities, Christopher faces a genuine dilemma. Especially noteworthy is Christopher's reluctance to admit drug use to Tony, reminiscent of the severe beating he endured after getting high following Adriana's death. I'll never pass a drug test. His true fear lies in Tony discovering a wire if emergency responders find him in a compromised state. In a previous episode, Christopher informs Polly about a state trooper installing a drop ceiling in his basement, raising eyebrows. Throughout The Sopranos, authorities attempted to bug Tony Soprano's house, succeeding once but thwarted by Meadows' timely intervention. Why didn't they bug Christopher's? His drug use impaired judgment and tendency to ramble made him a prime target. With a family to consider, Christopher ultimately decides to cooperate, weighing the risks and rewards. Could he have been planning a new life in witness protection, writing his memoirs, or pursuing a career in modeling? Share your thoughts on this intriguing theory below. On the podcast Talking Sopranos, creator David Chase revealed an intriguing storyline involving Livia, Tony's mother, and her unexpected betrayal. In Chase's original vision, Livia was poised to play a pivotal role in a gripping twist of fate. Had the late Nancy Marchand still been with us, the story would have taken a dramatic turn. The plan? Livia, caught with stolen airline tickets, would have turned state's witness against Tony, implicating him in a RICO case. This revelation ignites speculation. Would Tony have faced imprisonment? Would Silvio have risen to assume a leadership role? Oh, f*** this. Oh, no. While uncertainties loom, one fact remains. Chase's vision would have fundamentally reshaped the series' trajectory. Despite this storyline never materializing, Chase's creative decisions left an indelible mark on The Sopranos, prompting fans to contemplate the tantalizing possibilities of Livia's potential betrayal. So what, no f Ziti now? Hey! If you're as intrigued as we are by the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the mob world, then you won't want to miss our full video on the Sopranos actors turned criminals in real life. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay wise and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.